Hello. This short talk comes from a headline I noticed in a newspaper about something called a splatometer test. I thought, splatometer? That sounds interesting. So firstly, I'll explain about the splatometer and then talk about the potential consequences of less splat. Uh, you know when you're driving a car, particularly when it's summertime and the weather is warmer, you tend to get a lot of dead insects on your car windscreen. If you ride a bicycle, they can go in your eyes and mouth. The insects on your windscreen get splattered. Um, the, they hit the windscreen and then spread out a little over the glass. And this is the splatometer test. Uh, how many insects are splattered on the windscreen? Two studies have found that the number of insects splattered by cars are declining rapidly, which means that there has been a decline in the number of insects, specifically in European sites over the last two decades. Uh, the two studies I mentioned were carried out recently. The first was in Denmark and uh, researched by Moller and was published in the journal uh, Ecology and Evolution and it measured numbers of insects every summer between 1997 and 2017. The study discovered an 80% decline in insects splattered on windscreens and a similar decline in the number of insect-eating birds, like swallows. The other study was in the UK in 2019 and was led by Paul Tinsley Marshall. This study found a 50% decline in insect impacts compared to 2004 as measured by the number of dead insects on car license plates. Other studies have also researched the decline in insect population. Uh, Dave Goulson in the current biology magazine reports that a recent study from Germany suggested that insects may be in a state of catastrophic population collapse. The German data describes a 76% decline in biomass over 26 years. Uh, in a similar study in Puerto Rico, um, it was estimated that insect populations have declined somewhere between 75% and 98% over the last 35 years. So the evidence there suggests that there are a lot fewer insects. You might think that's good news if you enjoy having picnics in the park or the countryside and don't want to be swatting away insects every few seconds. Indeed, some supposed experts like medical professor and well-known TV presenter Lord Robert Winston once claimed that there are quite a lot of insects we don't really need on the planet. However, that is just not true. And that claim came from a very well-known doctor who has been made a lord. So he's the type of person people listen to and believe. But in that case, he was talking nonsense. And if you look at a lot of what he says, it's actually nonsense. Uh, the decline in the number of insects is certainly not good news. Insects are certainly not pests. They are most definitely required for the survival of humans and other plants and animals. Many insects, you see, are pollinators. They help to create much of the food we eat. Bees are the usual example of this pollination, as they pollinate over three quarters of crops producing fruit and uh, seeds for human consumption. But other insects do the same job. And it's not limited to pollination where insects are vital. Other insects act as pest controllers or, for example, as recyclers of waste. And, of course, insects are food for birds. I mentioned earlier the decline in the numbers of swallows, the species of bird. Swallows eat insects. If there are not enough insects uh, for the birds to eat, they can't survive. So basically, the insects that may sometimes annoy us are actually a vital part of the ecosystems 
that we rely on to survive. Now, our survival is obviously important, so I'll end this talk by looking briefly at what can be done to stop the decline in insect numbers. So firstly, pesticide use on crops and plants needs to be phased out. A pesticide, as the name suggests, kills insects. Secondly, farming methods which are based on more natural methods of farming, uh, which basically entails not using chemicals in the forms of herbicides and pesticides, uh, using more natural fertilizers to help crops grow, and having a much wider range of crops growing and more space between and around those crops for natural plants and flowers to grow. These measures would attract a wider variety of insects and other small animals to the farmland, thus increasing diversity. In addition, uh, pollution in the form of light, noise and water all need to be reduced. Uh, these three forms of pollution at least deter insects and other animals from being in the places where they are needed and in the worst cases can kill the insects and animals. Finally, more research is required to monitor insect populations to ensure that the measures I've just summarised are actually working. There are also things that individuals can do to help as well. If you have a garden, however large or small, don't just have it as grass uh, or concrete or even worse, plastic grass. Make sure you have some flowers in the garden. Flowers obviously attract insects, which in turn attract birds. It's fairly easy to make a bug hotel from old bits of wood and bricks. Uh, see the picture on the screen for an example there. These bug hotels give a variety of insects somewhere to hide when it's cold or rainy. So to conclude then, the decline in the insect population is a serious issue, although it may not seem like one. Insects are essentially vital for human survival. So do your bit and plant flowers and make bug hotels and support natural farming. Thank you.